For a long time, the people using the scientific method to study the Creator's creation called themselves natural philosophers. Some of them were mathematicians, some were businessmen and industrialists, some were aristocrats. They were all interested in finding out the truth about the way the creation worked. But in 1840, a group of American intellectuals coined the term scientist, applied the name to themselves, and set about improving their status in society. They began to bring in rules which had to be followed for acceptance as a scientist. One of these rules is that you must have a qualification which they recognize from an institution which they recognize. One of the great pioneering scientists was Michael Faraday. He had no academic qualifications at all. He taught himself everything he knew. He would not be recognized as a scientist today. Another requirement is that scientific research must be published in technical journals which they recognize or control. These journals gradually became institutionalized so that anything published there is recognized as science, but anything published anywhere else is not recognized as science. Rewards are paid to universities if their staff publish in those journals. Lists of establishment journals are circulated in universities and staff are told to publish in them. Universities have come to rely on those big, fat payments. The papers sent to these journals are censored, and only papers which agree with establishment policy are published. All this has gradually brought the establishment enormous power. That might not have been worrying if science had carried on as it began, with God-fearing men seeking the truth about the Creator's creation. But a different worldview predominates in this new power structure. They have a different view on the answer to the great question of life. Why is there something instead of nothing? On the answer you give to that question depends your entire worldview and life view. Centuries of thought could find only two possible answers. Either the creation was created by a creator, or the creation created itself. If it was created by a creator, he must have created it for a purpose. In that case, we live in a world of accountability, purpose and metaphysics. There's the possibility that we may be asked to give an account of the life we lived, and there's a reality behind or beyond our senses. But if the creation created itself, there can't be any design or purpose. We live in a world of chance, autonomy and materialism. Reality is defined by our senses. If we can't see, smell, taste or touch something, it doesn't exist. I think most people would prefer the second alternative. You are your own boss. You can do whatever you like. You're not accountable to anybody. Your life's your own. But until about a hundred years ago, every society in history had accepted the first alternative. You're not your own boss. There are dimensions which your senses can't detect. You may have to account to a creator after you die. Communism is the only culture which has ever been deliberately built on atheism. The only culture which has deliberately opted for a creator-free creation. As far as I can see, the only reason anyone would opt for a creator is because the evidence is overwhelming. Until about a hundred years ago, almost all people saw in the creation around us the plants, the animals, people, the oceans, the stars, the working of a powerful intelligence. But the new status-seeking establishment scientists are God-despising atheists, and that has consequences for the science they now rule with a rod of iron. Sir Henry Dale was one of the old breed of Christian scientists. He won the Nobel Prize for Physiology Medicine in 1936. 
he made an interesting observation on science. And science, we should insist, better than any other discipline, can hold up to its students and followers an ideal of patient devotion to the search for objective truth, with vision unclouded by personal or political motive, not tolerating any lapse from precision or neglect of any anomaly, fearing only prejudice and preconception, accepting nature's answers humbly and with courage, and giving them to the world with an unflinching fidelity. The world cannot afford to lose such a contribution to the moral framework of its civilization. He talks of science as a search for objective truth, with patience and diligence without personal motives. But Dale could see that science was in danger of losing these high ideals, leading to the whole of society losing its way. Richard Lewontin is one of the modern, secular humanist scientists. He's also written about science. Let's see what he says. We take the side of science in spite of the patent absurdity of some of its constructs, in spite of its failure to fulfill many of its extravagant promises of health and life, in spite of the tolerance of the scientific community for unsubstantiated just-so stories. Because we have a prior commitment, a commitment to materialism. We are forced, by our a priori adherence to material causes, to create an apparatus of investigation and a set of concepts that produce material explanation, no matter how counterintuitive, no matter how mystifying to the uninitiated. Moreover, that materialism is an absolute. For we cannot allow a divine foot in the door. Henry Dale and Richard Lewontin are talking about two different things. Dale speaks of a search for objective truth, demanding devoted precision and fidelity. He's talking about science which follows the scientific method. Lewontin speaks of tolerating patent absurdity and unsubstantiated just-so stories because of a commitment to materialism aimed at not allowing a divine foot in the door. He makes no mention of truth. Secular science denies that truth, even if it exists, could ever be found. Secular science seeks only useful theories. This change in worldview from a creation created by a creator to a creation which created itself has led to some drastic changes in science which the public are not told about. Let's look at some of those changes next time. Thank you for joining me for this episode. If you enjoyed it, please like, subscribe and press the bell so that you'll be notified as I release new movies. If you'd like to support this project, you're welcome to do so through Patreon. Find the link on my channel banner and in the description below.